Okay, so today, uh, everybody, thanks for the chance. Uh, I will share about my uh, uh, product management transition experience. Uh, and, and this is more about like uh, how, uh, what, I, what kind of learnings that I had uh, after I moved into product and a bit of context about what do I do and my team does in, in, the, in, in the product management space, uh, which is trying to do in, in, in the grab marketplace. So there will be three three key three key contents. One is about uh, about Grab itself. Uh, what do we do? Second is about uh, the transition experience that I had, uh, and last is probably several tips for uh, everybody here, uh, just to share on what I learned and what will be the good practices for for you to start as a product manager. Okay, uh, let me just get started. Uh, let me start with our mission in Grab. Uh, and I will dig down a bit deeper about our driver partners and the main problems that we are solving in, in, in Grab. Yeah. So to start, uh, uh, I would love to share about Grab missions and and how we can we plan to make a difference through Grab. Yeah. So so Grab uh, in Grab mission is to drive Southeast Asia forward by creating economic empowerment for everyone. Uh, what does it mean? So we we believe always believe that businesses have two bottom lines. One is to deliver profit, and the other one is to give impact, social impact at the same time. And how we are giving a social impact is through uh, ensuring that our everyday entrepreneurs, which is the backbone of our economy in Southeast Asia, to thrive through technologies. Yeah. So uh, how do we ensure that they thrive through technologies? Uh, I think this is what we are trying to provide to create a marketplace for them uh, so that they are able to meet their consumers meet their customers and providing services and then providing benefit to each other so if you imagine like a pre-internet days how are the entrepreneurs and the uh, consumers or customers meet they meet in the physical space right and they make maybe meet in the shopping malls or maybe meet a store and then how can we attract more consumers into that place is by making the place more attractive so how we make this uh uh, transition into a physical space into in the post-internet days where it is for the back technology now to grab um, all these everyday entrepreneurs are able to uh, contribute or participate in this marketplace to grab app so if you are a merchant you can sell in grab if you are drivers you can provide services in grab to by joining your drivers and you can be online at any time in any places but if we are we don't stop there and we don't have all the answers uh, we we also ensure that our sustainability is there so not only we provide them the marketplace to trade but also we always train them we also always uh, inform them uh, and with the right data information about well, how they can make a decision how can they become better in what they do so that they continuously help to improve their earnings as well I will go into a bit of more details about that, but that's uh, in general is uh, what is our principle and sharing that our great way. Next is about uh, where we are in Southeast Asia. Uh, happy to share with everybody that we are available in 400 city, 400 plus cities in eight countries. Uh, over the years, Grab has expanded our offerings across Southeast Asia, and it, the services included delivery of deliveries, mobility, financial services, enterprise, and others, and all supported through the super app. Uh, we have about 5 million registered driver partners, uh, and then about 2 million merchant partners, and about 2, 2 million plus also Grab Kiosk agents in our platform. Now, talking specifically about our drivers, this is a persona that I work in day-to-day -day basis and uh, always have been back on my mind, like how we can try to improve their livelihood. So when we first started, like many, many years ago, our driver partners only make an earning through transporting passengers. So maybe you only remember them through the service like a Grab car or just Grab, uh, where we are, uh, where they are basically just uh, operating like a, like a taxi driver, so picking up passenger and, they, and uh, dropping off the passenger in other places. Uh, but now today, Grab driver partners can toggle between different services. So they can do ride hailing, the, the, the services that I just mentioned, a food delivery, packages and groceries, everything in one single app. This enables them to maximize their earnings. And this is also diversify their, their, their income stream and it's enable them to work anytime, any places. So no matter their schedule, no matter whether you want to work as a full-time or as a part-time, Grab is there to be to help you 
uh, to, to enable you to work in the marketplace. Now, talk a bit more specific. Uh, to solve driver problems, there's a lot of problems in drivers uh, that we need to solve. Uh, and there's a lot of product managers as well uh, in, in that functions. So what, I, what do I do specifically is how we can ensure that we have a reliable supply anywhere, anytime. So when you imagine somebody as a joint grab as a driver, they only they want to have a good earnings, right? By having senders and uh, merchants actually want to uh, to have a quality, high quality drivers nearby. So Grab need to optimize uh, the match between this demand and the supply, which is our drivers, to ensure that we have a service that's sustainable for all the business vertical, be it the Grab pool, be it the Grab car or Grab mark. Uh, we need to ensure that it's sustainable for everybody. And, and the biggest challenge of all this is the supply itself is not constant. It's not sitting down in one place and, or, and it will stay there forever. Uh, well, as soon as drivers finish uh, dropping off uh, something in one place, uh, the, he will be available in that play, that new place, and the demand supply situation in that place can, could be different with what he had before. So it could be super oversupply, it could be undersupply. And if you look at the picture on the right, it's, it's a, a sample of situation that we have in Singapore many years ago, and, and we, we tried to collect the data. Actually, it's supposed to be animated. Um, so there are areas where we are so oversupply, and there are areas where we are undersupply, as we see over here. So the red one is on supply, the red one is oversupply. So it seems like this is a time where the drivers are, are more in the Changi side of area. So we have a lot of drivers over there, but we are lacking drivers in the city area. The question is how we can move drivers from that area into the, the central area, how we make drivers realize that there's actually the earning opportunities inside the cities instead of uh, stopping over there. So these this are, this are the challenges that uh, we work on. And how we are doing it, uh, we, we do many things. Uh, one is we guide drivers to, to, to go into high demand areas. So you, you can see that they can see in the driver app, there's a heat map uh, over the place in the top, you can see that, oh, the waiting time will be a bit uh, faster compared to the other places. We also give some insight on some location. Hey, this location have more jobs compared to the other jobs. And not stopping into that, we, we can try to incentivize drivers as well. So how can we ensure that uh, he's attracted into moving to, to, to other places. So we, we have a kind of like a, gamy, a gamy, gamification mechanism, like we give some, some uh, gems for the drivers, and when the drivers collected enough gems, then it can be traded to cash. So these gems can be collected by completing jobs, can be collected by moving to some locations. So if you see in the, in the, in the picture in the middle, there are some uh, location that has a treasures, there are some location that have extra gems, so when the drivers move there, then he can get extra earnings. The other way is also we try to make it fun and engaging by trying to tap into the power of community. So what we know about drivers in Southeast Asia, they are they love to work with each other. They, they, they love to share and they love to sit down and share and, and working together. And so we, we have a mechanism of creating competitions for drivers so they can work together in the team and then within the team, we can see the progress of that team together. And then we create a leaderboard so that we can uh, everybody can monitor for each of the team how how good the progress of their progress compared to the the, the other groups that they have in the city. So it's making fun and engaging. And this is uh, has been really really useful in some countries that is uh, that has a very strong power of community. Yep. So that's about that's about Grab. So that's about what we do in Grab, and that what uh, excites me every day when I when I go to office and try to think about how do we solve driver's problem. Now that we go into the next section about uh, the transition into product role. So what I've learned. So this is my career journey. Uh, so it, it is uh, uh, I graduated with, uh, graduated around 2008 uh, from a computer science degree in in Bandung Institute of Technology. Indonesia, very talented developers, and they are really wanted to work to create a multiplayer online uh, games, and and we want to try to put some Indonesia background stories around it. So so we have this vision, and then I do help them in creating these games, and 
uh, we also uh, submit this for a competition and uh, the good news is so as, uh, as we want something but after that after that I, I decided and some, some of us on, on that team decided to move on and try to find a job that uh, outside and then uh, I moved to Unilever. Unilever is a very good company. It's, a, it's a one of the biggest FMCG in the world. And it is also have a very big presence in Indonesia. And at the time they have uh, this uh, SAP implementation project, which just interests me. And then I joined there and I learned a lot about supply chains, I learned a lot about uh, how the FMCG business run. And then uh, when we and contributed into the order of cash process, distribution process, warehouse process, all, all these things. And yeah, I spent about two years in Indonesia, and then uh, there's a opening in Singapore. Uh, the same skill set is needed, so that's why I moved to Singapore. Try to apply the same experience to for a Malaysia and Singapore context. Uh, and meanwhile, and at my free time, I feel like uh, let's let's make use of this time, and I, I try to uh, take my master degree in NTU. And I still continue working in uh, afterwards until 2015. I started to manage a team, and uh, my my scope is getting expanded to several other countries like Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, and interestingly, Korea, uh, which is a bit far from Southeast Asia, but, but it's very interesting to learn about these new cultures. Yeah, and it ends on 2018, and, and I figure out that uh, product management is something that interests me uh, a bit more. So I moved to Grab, and lucky enough that the people in Grab were willing enough to accept me as a, as a product manager. I started to work on incentive products and uh, slowly expanded into other products that we have in uh, supply shipping functions, which is basically enable drivers available at any time. And also uh, towards the end, also I, towards now, I'm working on also on the uh, how we can enable drivers to have more earnings. So how we can diversify the income streams and how we can ensure that they understand what their earnings. So uh, the big question is, and, and this is something that many people ask me at the time, why switch to product? Uh, what makes product management very interesting for you? And I think it's, uh, this role is actually very interesting for many people, especially if you are very, very interested in technology. Um, but for myself, uh, I, I do a bit of research about this role. And, and uh, because of my, of my passion of learning about new technologies, I, I try to find like, hey, what would be the best role for me? And interestingly, at the same time, when I do my all my research, there is a there's a kind of workshop that happens in, the, I mean, in my company at the time. Uh, it's like a purpose workshop. Uh, the company intention is to find the match between what what the employee wants and what the what the roles is available in the in the in the in the company. And what I realized after after having a lot of talk with people in that workshop is uh, whatever that my purpose is, as I, as I've written in the picture on the right, is like I like to build something that improves life of others. The, the exact the excitement that I have is when I see that the the users of my 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 solutions or my products or my uh, my technology changes that I make is is being happy and being help getting help because of the of the work that me and my team has and working in FMCG IT actually help to improve some life of employees and shareholder by streamlining supply chain management we we make it very efficient we make it the cost we make the cost less we make the hours spent by employee less. But one thing that I realized, uh, if you work as a product manager, uh, is actually you can expand the impact a bit more. You can help to hundreds of th or thousands of people, uh, people's lives to improve using technology. And when the opportunity for, from Grab came, it's even bigger. So it is, it is able, uh, the opportunity is to help millions of South Asia drivers to earn additional income to feed their families. So for me, it sounds like obvious choice. Uh, the impact is bigger. So um, at the time, I decided, okay, let's try something new, and this is a new opportunity. Let's 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 just uh, let's just jump, jump ship for now. Yeah, and then is that it? Like, is that after move, and then uh, then you can perform at your role? I think you have some some transferable skills, right? Uh, so you can just start doing the job. Well, it's not that easy actually uh, I learned a lot and the first year second year even until now I constantly learn something new and the pace is very different and uh, the way to approach things is very different and here I can I can highlight some of the things that is uh, become a very key key changes or key mindset change that I have first is about uh, where the requirements come from 
when when I was an IT business partner for business, uh, building solution for business, I, most of the requirement came from business, and we dis, we have to implement for them. Yeah, I can influence. I can uh, I can help to tell them that hey, this is to be the right better solution. But again, the decision came from them. Uh, as a product manager, you don't have that kind of direction. You should be the one who come with the requirements, or or actually in in reality, you have to work with the team to build the the, the exact solutions that that you want to make. So so you should come with requirements, get and also push. The, <laughs> Uh, that's your stakeholder get support from your stakeholders um, and, the, and the other story in the other part is about uh, whether it is driven by what so as a product manager you're driven by OKR and key metrics what is our priority in this year or this quarter whether it is driver earnings whether it's fulfillment whether it is uh, yeah anything uh, anything that is uh, that is uh, become a business focus at that time that is the way you are being uh, this is what driven the business decision no product decisions but at the time, it's more uh, for for as I in, I mean, my previous role is more on the business case and like how much the revenue, how much the cost that can be it can be obtained from from this project, and that's it. That let's decide uh, what what to be done and how you are being measured. As a product manager, it doesn't matter you ship hundred percent hundred products, hundred features as long uh, if your if your impact is zero. So it's more about your impact, how much changes that you have made in terms of. Uh, whatever the goal is, like if your goal is improving driver's life, is the driver earnings improve? Is the fulfillment rate is improved? So all these things are becoming your, your, uh, your, your measurement, right? Uh, well, uh, as a, in the previous role, it's more like I was daily, I was measured by project deliveries. If you if you sh if you deliver all these uh, ten projects on time and and no issues, no tickets, that is, we can consider this as successful. Yeah. So the other two parts, uh, scope uh, is is uh, in, in as IT role. Uh, I would tell the developers, hey, this is what we need to do. I, uh, I even negotiate on the pricing with them. Uh, and it's, it's a very uh, transactional uh, relationship being being made. Uh, as a product manager, you co-create with your developers. Hey, this is a problems, and can, how can we solve it together? So this is a very different mindset. So you have to listen from everybody. You have to. You have to accommodate everybody on the uh, their ideas, and it actually helps you to go into beyond uh, something new that beyond that you have to think about. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one is about strategy. So uh, product manager influence strategy. So although there are some direction from the top, uh, there are always input needed from a product manager on defining what should we do uh, uh, from this business perspective. But uh, when I was in IT, it's a much more in, in following the strategy from business, from business and IT team is to support the strategy to have. Yes, and and that's it. Okay, those are the challenges. Your your mindset is changed. What else did you learn? Oh, there's a lot of surprises, and I can make this page a bit even longer. But I think I think what my uh, my intention is to share what are the key what are the key learnings as well that I learned after after I started this role. So one is not everything you build it has an impact yeah so uh it is it's it it's almost possible it's very much possible that you build something it looks flashy it looks it looks useful but nobody's using it and nobody's getting uh, getting the benefit out of it and second is like not all customer ass is going to be used let alone to be used for useful for them you need to look at carefully to your segmentations you need to look at carefully you need to test that first to be to ensure that it is it is working, I had an experience of a feature that has been asked by a, a driver for many many years, and then I have been hearing it a lot and I started to get makes starting to feel that it makes sense for me. I tried to fight to make it happen, and then when then after I make it happen, uh, we run experiment, and after we run experiments, uh, we see metrics moving slowly, so only impact for a few key few key few key persona uh, for a few key segments. Yeah, you have to be a bit careful and in terms of making decisions. So not cast all customer asks to be is going to be useful. So you have to look in uh, you have to test it. And also in doing user research and looking to data, there's uh, always 
possibility of having of ha a selection bias happen. So uh, I also had experience of like uh, testing with the with the users, and then and the users are, are really delightful with the, they're really happy with this feature, and 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 yeah, they they're they're really looking forward this to happen. But after it happens, then uh, there's there's no there's a very minimum impact that we see. So and and this is after we learn is because of we, we there's some selection bias when we are trying to uh, do the user research. So it might be useful for some segment, but not all segments are getting impacted, or not all the segments that we target are getting impacted. Um, the same applicable for data. Be careful with your selection bias. Uh, the second last point about the, who is the boss. Uh, product name manager is not the boss. You have to sell your ideas. You have to push the ideas to the stakeholders. You have to listen from your uh, from your developers, for anybody, you need to ensure that everybody's happy and contributing uh, very well into into your team. So it's it's, it's a lot of uh, people related uh, uh, skill set that we have to maintain uh, by doing this role. And last but not least, is about prioritization. So you may have like hundred beautiful ideas, fifty of them we can do it, and twenty of them possibly may have impact, may have good good impact. And then you can only do two of them, two. So this sometimes demotivates you, but this is also uh, something that you have to deal every day. So you have to prioritize brutally. Like I, you, you, are, you need to be really sure that this is something that will be useful. And also this applies to with your time as well. So there's a lot of things that you can manage, that a lot of things that you can do, but you have to prioritize your time only to do something that's impactful. Okay, uh, let's be move to the next slides. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I learned in general. So I think I'll just move into the last uh, five slides in in this, and then we can go into the question session. I want to share some tips of uh, how wh what will be useful uh, for you as a product manager, and this is what I learned as well. One is understand your customers. So there's never enough time to learn about how your customers use your product. You always find some insight by sitting with them, trying to listen from them even following them doing their work using your product. Uh, don't assume that they will do and use it based on in certain ways. Always check, always get a feedback. And I, it happens to me a couple of times as well. So my product is being used by Grab drivers. And then I, when I took the, when I took a Grab ride, I, I do observe and how they interact with the app, how they decide, how they make decisions. Uh, and sometimes I do ask, so what does it mean? And everything is it's always something new that you can cover. So always try to listen to your customer, observe them, understand them, understand their mindset, understand their uh, pain points. And this will help you to, in terms of developing your product sense. Second is uh, once you understand the problem, try to deep dive into it, like uh, define it clearly, uh, get them into understanding the problem, ask why a lot, why, why they are doing this. Uh, and after you have, get an answer, ask a bit deeper and don't, don't uh, jump into solution directly. And yeah, and, and when when you jump to solution directly, you have a tendency of solving the wrong problem. So be, be sure that you are solving the right problem. And also when you need to size it, whether it's worth solving or not, uh, if it is as, uh, it's worth, worth solving, then you might prioritize it. And after that, then you make hypothesis of the define if I solve this, if I make these changes, uh, how you can define that this is successful or not. And last is about iteration. So when you test it, uh, try to start small. And I expand this in the next slide. So uh, start small, experiment, and iterate. So one thing to be avoided is to invest in a big project and then realize that in the end, it doesn't get any of your goal. So I, I, it happens a uh, few times to me. And after that, I learned that it's always, to have, always best to start small test if the metric matrix moving, if the if the customer response is good, if if not, then scrap and iterate and try finding finding something new. So these are just an example. We try to do some nudges to validate if the responses are clear. And we also try to put, build a leaderboard. This leaderboard came up came out in a one a small experiment that we did. So although the leaderboard looks beautiful over here, there's a lot of ops heavy process that running in behind that uh, to pay the drivers, to, to make a communication to drivers, to create a team. So yeah, this is, we do this to, to validate whether this product is actually working or not, because if it is not working, 
uh, all the investment will go away. So we need to ensure that it's, it is it is giving impact to, to the, our users. Uh, number four is that just keep looking into your data, uh, try to invest your time on it, uh, monitor closely, look at it every day, and understand your customer funnel, and uh, also our metrics. Uh, try to understand the correlations or the causations about all this data. And yeah, sometimes you have to get a look deeper and then you maybe get help from your data scientists or analysts or try to uncover all this. But by doing this, you 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 may or you will you will learn something new. You will especially if you connect it with the understanding of your customers in the beginning. And last is about uh, ownership. So uh, we need to and this is a good uh, this is a tips for everybody like uh, don't tell the developers about what to do but try to explain the problem that we want to solve and try to brainstorm with them what will be the solution my experience uh, you'll be amazed with the with the ideas that they came it will be out of the box uh, and then it, it will it will make the solution even better and the best thing is if we do the co-creation together with the with the developers or anybody within the team it creates ownerships, right? It creates a, a, a better willingness for, for the developers, for everybody to work on because they know the problem, they, it is embedded into their self. And then they, they're really, really willing to help it uh, to solve the problems. And this is an example, this is a small screenshot, but this is an example of when we try to solve uh, under supply uh, during rains. And my, my designer is a very wonderful person. He can it can create a, a workshop in a very short time and involve our, our developers. Uh, so we, if you see a small post-it notes over there, these are all the ideas. And it come from, not from product manager, it come from the developers. And we need to do this and do that. And not only developers, but also business team as well. There are the designers, there's our data scientists. So everybody contributes. And from all these ideas, we try to create something, uh, something more narrow and something that we believe that uh, will, will, it will give some impacts. So that's my last tips. Uh, I think that's all from my slides and my talks. So let's go to the question session.